Good morning and welcome to uh, Committee of the Whole. It's a budget meeting today. I have uh, regrets from Mirabai Fulci who had a scheduling conflict with the WDI meeting, Wasaga Distribution this morning, so I will be chairing the meeting. We have called the meeting to order. I'm now asking for a disclosure of pecuniary interests. At this point I have none. During the meeting, if you find yourself uh, in need, please identify yourself. Uh, moving right to deputations, presentations, petitions and public meetings. Today we have the Director of Finance and Treasury along with the department heads who will provide their department presentations in uh, preparation for the 2021 budget. So I will pass the meeting over to Jocelyn. Thank you, Madam Chair. And good morning, members of council, staff, and public viewers. The presentations that follow will highlight the major changes and initiatives for the 2021 draft one budget. Uh, each director and, or manager will speak about their individual program budgets. As we present, please feel welcome to ask questions. This is our opportunity to look at the details or gain a better understanding of the budget requirements. So I will begin with a short financial overview before the departmental presentations. So the background to today's discussion was the October 1st draft one budget binders that were distributed to council members along with two presentations that were provided, the draft one overview and the long-term capital and operating plan. Um, as mentioned, we're, we are providing department presentations to facilitate discussion. And at the completion of the presentations, we will ask for comments from council with respect to preparing draft two of the budget. This slide demonstrates the con consideration staff use when building the budget. Starting with the base adjustments, we look at the 2020 operating budget, including com and then we add compensation adjustments and inflationary pressures. We review ef efficiencies and program reduction opportunities and identify savings. We have consideration for legislative or contractual um, obligations, such as Regulation 588.17 for asset management uh, or Bill 108 changes to the DC Act. In our fiscal strategy, we apply practices such as building reserves for future asset replacement, use of debt to address asset replacement, and allocating that cost of the asset over the tax base of users with access to that asset. And we review user fee practices and adjusting where appropriate. For the impact of capital, we consider the method of payment collection. We sometimes use pay as you go for smaller items. Uh, with our vehicles, we use 50-50, 50% /50, taxation and 50% through reserves. And, and of course, on larger items, we use debt. And we consider the impact of future operating costs attached with the um, new assets. For growth and service enhancements, uh, we consider the operating impact of these enhancements and often population growth is driving the new service level of enhancements that are required. So in 2021, our new operating base is 41.9 million when we started with 41.1 million in 2020. And then our capital program is looked at uh, for individual projects and that capital program for 21 is 52 million. So the outcomes of the budget um, that we are looking for, we want to maintain existing core service levels for the program areas, uh, general government, community services, public works, and development and planning. Those are our four uh, core service areas. There are several capital projects and studies and software initiatives that have been started in prior years, and they will carry forward into 2021 as well and we bring those funds forward through reserves. There are some new initiatives included, and a, a list of them is included on this, this slide. These are just a few of them. So we have the affordable housing strategy, animal control program we have now brought in house, customer service payment enhancements, fleet purchases for our maintenance and replacements, our new capital projects, and we have some new software projects as well as any efficiency improvements and any enhancements. 
We, we have looked for efficiency improvements and have found some. These are reflected in individual budgets. And we have identified some new service levels, um, some of which are associated with COVID safety, such as more cleaning requirements that we have. We also have um, some draft two pending items that were noted in our staff report of the, uh, on October the 1st. And these include uh, contract staff renewals, and we have new staffing requests, financial support for the YMCA request, um, any additional COVID-19 budget impacts, our beachfront development costs, and our customer ser service review recommendations. Now under, I'll just do a summary of our financial status. Again, our town is financially stable. We have good reserves, close to 60 million. Low debt, approximately 13.1 million, that carries at 1.2 million each year. And um, we can afford to consider some new projects that will require support from the reserves, as well as carrying finance costs through the long-term debt. With the changes that have been proposed in draft one, we are estimating a tax rate percentage increase of 3.6%. The municipal tax rate of 0.58%, uh, which is just under 1%, is still substantially lower than our municipal comparators. And last year's tax rates for them were 1.01% for Midland and 0.71% for Collingwood. So no, we are comparing our 2021 tax rate to the 2020 tax rates of our comparators. So th there likely will be increases in the comparator tax rates. And it's an important adjustment this year that we will have the new DC rates as that will um, add additional reserve funds to support ongoing capital projects. The financial strategy incorporated in the budget process was to prioritize capital projects that would support ongoing or expected future development. And a few examples are listed on this slide. We have Sunnydale Trails, Beachfront, and Elm. And those are some examples of the developments. Another important financial strategy is to advance the Arena Library project. A benefit is that should another opportunity to apply for grant funding be offered, the town is well positioned to be shovel ready, which is a major factor influencing successful grants. Moving this project forward also provides the opportunity to confirm the cost estimates through the RFP process. We have considered the need to rebuild, rebuild reserves in various department budgets and continue this strategy in the outlook years. Using debt to help finance large capital projects is one of the financial decisions Ontario municipalities have to make. A common strategy is to use long-term debt to help finance assets that have a long life cycle, such as a 50-year building. This helps to spread the cost of the facility over about 30 years, sharing the tax burden of the financing cost over the many taxpayers of those years. This sharing approach is fairer to the current taxpayers in the base when the building is established. Part of the financial strategy for the long-term projects was to consider uh, funding streams that were fairly confident that they would be available, as opposed to other streams that may or may not happen. This conservative approach leads to a more dependable forecast, and if the additional funds materialize, our forecast will only improve. So that's just a short overview to, um, to our budget process. And at this point in time, we'll now start our uh, de departmental budgets, unless there are questions on the first part. All right, so I see one question from Councillor Bouanger. Yes, thank you, Deputy Mayor uh, Bray. Just, just a couple of comments uh, uh, related to this. One was uh, we refer to the eligibility to future grants. And certainly I understand that our strong financial position over the last number of years could have impacted our opportunity to receive uh, funding. But uh, 
I, I mentioned it once before, but we're in a situation where now the Ontario and federal governments have sent, spent billions of dollars related to COVID aid and support. And I don't believe that necessarily we're going to improve our eligibility for grants. We, we just don't know what the future is going to hold. Uh, governments uh, may tighten their belts significantly and it may be a lot more difficult to get grants regardless of our financial position. And uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Back to you, Jocelyn. Okay, thank you. Um, so as we move into our departmental presentations, uh, we'll begin with council, and I will at this time um, pass things over to our CAO. Thank you, uh, thank you, Jocelyn. So um, I'm not sure if members of council have their binders uh, with them, but if you if you do and you want to turn to um, tab six in your binder that deals with uh, um, general government section and uh, the second page in that um, in that uh, after that tab is the council council budget I'm just going to highlight a couple of points in the in the in the council budget for members of council first of all uh, the part-time wages uh, that are outlined in the council budget represent 50 percent of the um, executive assistant to a mayor council and the CAO's wages the other 50% are in the administration budget memberships uh, include our annual AMO membership and the Great Lakes and st. Lawrence cities initiatives uh, the insurance amount includes estimated increases for 2021 and it has uh, has jumped up about a thousand dollars so just if you have a look at that and then the integrity commissioner uh, we reduced the budget uh, by 10,000. It was a budget in 2020 of 30, and we've reduced that by 10 to 20,000 dollars. So that's uh, those are the highlights of the uh, of the council budget. Are there any questions for the CAO? No. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. So we'll now. Um, flip to the administration and policing budget and that follows in your in your binder and again I'm just going to hit a couple of uh, highlights as members of council are aware um, the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund grant is to remain the same um, in 2021 as the 2020 level um, a couple of years ago the government started to reduce that grant but earlier this year they announced that they were going to hold the grant level at the 2020 uh, level which is which is good <coughs> Further along in the revenue section of the, of the um, budget, you'll see that uh, there is transfer from beachfront rental properties uh, to uh, the admin department, and that is to help support the overhead costs of um, the beachfront property. So uh, the staff involvement, payroll, um, HR, administration costs. So that's the last line in the revenue, the revenue section of the admin budget. Now turning to expenditures, um, the council approved the uh, community engagement site, so th that cost has been added, so that's $12,000 uh, for that. Uh, legal fees, um, further down in that section, we've budgeted again $25,000. This, um, this amount floats um, in the sense that we don't know from year to year what our expenditures are going to be. Uh, so far in 2020, uh, we've exceeded that amount. Um, in 2019, we exceeded that amount as well. Um, any extra funds that are, or sorry, any expen ex extra expenditures that incur, those extras are <coughs> are funded through year-end surplus or reserves. So uh, we thought best we'll just keep it at 25,000 at this particular uh, point. Moving on to the uh, next slide, uh, the doctor recruitment program continues at 35,000. Um, I'm going to be bringing a report forward in November proposing some modifications uh, to the program. The uh, Conservation Authority budget um, has been received uh, by the municipality. It'll be on your council agenda in October and it's at uh, $242,000. It's a slight uh, decrease, I believe, from, uh, from 2020. Um, but uh, that'll be received by council next, uh, next week. 
Uh, the promotional budget has been reduced by $10,000. Uh, in the administration capital, uh, we've put in 46000 for uh, the 50% cost of the new community safety camera. That report was considered by council last year, or sorry, last month, and that was uh, in response to a, um, a grant program that uh, we're in partnership with the OPP. So that, that's been added in there. And with the OPP, the 2021 budget uh, sees a slight decrease of $16,000 over the 2020, um, 2020 amount. And uh, that concludes, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, the administration and policing uh, presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. Um, we'll move now to the clerk's um, and legislative services presentation. Good morning, Council. With regards to the clerk's department, the budget remains mainly status quo with a couple of notable items, <coughs> including the removal of the records management contract and archives move. Since the department structure uh, includes a records management position, the contract's no longer needed. The archives will be moving to its new location and as a result will require an operational budget to maintain the building and to manage utility costs, etc. Staff will be meeting this afternoon to refine the needs and add in appropriate op operating costs into the next roll-up. Due to this year's circumstances, the cemetery road extension project was not completed and therefore will carry forward to 2021. Um, that cost is $35,000. Um, and a reminder that the second year of phase in for the business licensing fees adopted in 2019 will take effect. Um, and we also note impacts of 2020 revenue due to flex payments and no late fees at approximately $6,500. As the beach drive meters have been removed, um, the budget is reflecting a $95,000 loss. Um, while significant tif ticket revenue increase of $80,000 noted here is referring to the actuals for 2020, um, the budget has been adjusted for 2021 from $65,000 to $80,000 to reflect an average over the last few years. There are two small capital projects scheduled um, for replacement of radios and parking lot signs. At this time, staffing, these staffing requests have not been built in the budget, into the budget. The department will be requesting the addition of two summer bylaw officers as a result of managing the sand covered portion of Beach Drive and to enforce the newly adopted bylaw as advised previously when adopting the bylaw. In addition, we will be looking to return the summer bylaw administrative assistant contract back to prior year levels um, due to the negative effect on the department. Uh, we haven't noted it here, but in addition to the, uh, should the pandemic continue into 2021, um, Council will be looking to, to um, bring forward the beachfront pods and the budget that um, is associated. Moving to capital for uh, parking and bylaw, there are a, a number of notable items, not too many this year. Um, the staff are requesting a utility terrain vehicle, and this for, is for use on Beach Drive and the MPA to assist um, in enforcement um, and, insist, and also assist enforcement in the municipal trails for dogs off leash and uh, motor vehicles. The department is also currently borrowing two surplus ve fleet vehicles that could be redistributed to other departments that are in need of a vehicle. Um, and since the bylaw department needs more vehicles in the summer than the winter, seasonal vehicle is an ideal option in order to re redistribute vehicles to other departments. The remaining two projects included office furniture for a desk replacement and file room shelving, as well as a small office renovation um, in the bylaw department to include paint, a new sign, and meeting room improvements. And all of these capital projects are going to be funded by parking reserves, so they will not be on the tax base. And that concludes um, the clerk's cemetery and bylaw departments. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, just to Dina, you mentioned about the uh, utility vehicle. 
But all you mentioned was the enforcement aspect of it. I think it's important that people understand that our bylaw does do a key factor in safety, searching, uh, rescue, and I'm sure that this new utility vehicle will be tasked to do and help with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. It's a very good point. We do um, get called out to um, water rescue um, situations, and certainly that will be used for that as well. Councillor Foster, did you also have some comments? Yes, I did. Thank you. Just a couple of quick comments. Um, <clears throat> again, on the UTV question, uh, if memory serves, we just got one of those a year and a half ago more or less and I wondered how what percentage usage our existing one has so could it be tasked differently that's just one take it and think about it the other one is just a comment you made about office furniture in the bylaw and you said it's for a new desk um, five thousand dollars for a new desk seems a little extravagant I've gone on to the IKEA catalog and you can get the Jurgen Lerf for a thousand dollars so I just wondered if there's more than just a, a, a single desk like that's craziness yes it would be more than a single desk the um, one particular desk would be in the municipal law enforcement coordinator's office that needs replacement um, but in our meeting room there are little um, desks all around that area that we would need to improve in order to utilize that space they're very um, not wide enough for our officers to be able to place a laptop on and do um, work so we're looking to um, improve the, the those as well that's fine yeah you would yeah. use the singular term desk not desks so thank you for that clarification yes Seeing no more questions back to you okay thank you madam chair so we now move forward with the Treasury Department um, presentation. And we have um, had a permanent removal of one FTE in the department. We started this process in the 2020 budget by not including it and um, the position funds were used to support another department for 2020. Uh, and we looked at various ways that we might be able to um, take that workload that seem more uh, required during the summer months uh, when we have uh, higher activity in the Treasury ca cashier area. Uh, we were able to cover that by using the permanent part-time summer student that we have each year. And then uh, as well, we did some workload balance within the team and we're still working on that. And we looked for any improvements in our processes that we could have efficiency. And we've been able to now remove that position and share that workload. So that was one efficiency improvement that's fully recognized now permanently in the budget. We also have um, asset management software project that's going to carry forward into 2021. And this is related to Regulation 588.17. We're going to be needing to have some new software to be able to support our asset management um, legislative requirements. We were hoping to look at that software in 2020, but the opportunity has not been there. Um, so we will move forward with that into 2021. And this is the Treasury portion of that software cost is the, is the uh, 36000 we also have added uh, 10000 to our uh, costs for online payment expenditures. As we are expanding our online payment opportunities to increase uh, our payments to come through an online method as opposed to coming in person into the cash counter. We also will present in draft two a request to continue the grant position contract. That contract ends in June of 2021. So this is just the timing. It's a two-year contract. It's fallen into this time period for, to be re, uh, reviewed for continuation. We have approached the different departments and how well that position is supporting them with their grant needs, and there is a need for this position. So we'll bring that forward in draft two in the discussions that take place. When we look at our debentures, which is part of the Treasury budget, um, the total debt projected at the end of 2021 will be $21.2 million. 
and that will be consisting of our two beachfront property debentures. One is with uh, TD and the other one is with Ontario Infrastructure. So those um, um, amounts of debts will remain for 2021 and then we still have a debenture for street lights and we have one, our new debenture for the fire truck that was purchased in 2020. Additionally, in 2021, we will be adding 8.9 million of construction financing for the new arena library project. So our forecasted uh, long-term debt for, at the end of 2021 is 21.2 million and the carrying costs are 1.29 million for 21. And that concludes the treasury presentation. Are there any questions? And if I see none, I will now pass the next presentation to uh, Derek Bowers, our Chief Information Technology Officer, to present the IT presentation. Thank you, Madam Chair. So with regards to the information technology for this year, uh, for 2021, Things are pretty much status quo with uh, our operating and capital. With operating, we, rather than having a 17-week co-op student, I've requested that our existing contract be extended an additional uh, 10 weeks. And with regards to the corporate software that has been uh, implemented by a number of various departments, which some have been spoken to already, those are being carried over from 2020 into 2021 in order to uh, get them put into place. And uh, that is it for IT. Councillor Foster. Thank you, <coughs> Madam Chair. Um, just a quick question, that 10 week extension to the junior technician, 43,000 K for that for just for a 10 week extension is that correct so the 43000 is what would normally be allotted for a summer student for 17 weeks and so that amount that that would come to has been calculated out um, for the same amount which comes out to 10 weeks for our existing contract i look at it um, we're bringing in a student and the time that's taken in order to train them bring them up to speed is more advantageous in order to keep our existing uh, person working. All right, I want to think on that one. I may contact you privately after or separately afterwards, but certainly. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Blanche? That seems high. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, over and above the grant, we're talking about uh, $247,000 uh, for improved software, which is about a 1% tax increase uh, for our uh, town. I, I'm assuming that like, this, is, this would be a one-time cost and then there would be some renewal fees attached to that. Do we, do we know going forward roughly uh, what the renewal will be? You don't, we don't have to answer today if you don't know it. I, I do have the numbers. It is in our uh, budget um, for the operating um, annual costs for what those softwares will be. Uh, the asset management one, we do not have a firm number on. The uh, um, city view that we're rolling out, that one we do have an annual uh, cost on, but these costs are the initial implementation costs. Okay, and the uh, question for the CAO. Uh, I, would, I would think that, uh, you know, the efficiencies and the increased productivity related to new software doesn't necessarily uh, reflect a, a cost savings going forward, but uh, we're a growing community, so it it probably will have impact that we would uh, have to, uh, or, or more likely not to have to expand uh, positions as quickly as we would have otherwise due to the efficiency. I know uh, our treasurer indicated some efficiencies in her department. I don't know the details, but I would expect that with this investment, we're expecting that although payroll may not reduce, we will probably be able to grow it at a slower pace going forward in some areas. Would that be a fair statement? 
Uh, through you, uh, Madam Chair, yes, that would be a fair statement in terms of a, it would be across the organization. So, and these are a lot of, uh, as the as the manager has indicated, corporate software. So, across all departments, some of them are tax supported, some of them are not tax supported. But yes, there would be um, savings in as you've outlined across the departments. Thank you. Uh, just one last comment on this, and I'm I'm hoping that uh, that it's a positive answer, but. Uh, in this age of uh, increased risk related to cyber attacks and everything else, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, uh, some of the software we're employing uh, is a little more robust as from a security perspective too. Very much so. Thank you. Thank you. Further to Councillor Belanger's comment, um, I think the Treasurer outlined that um, you had been able to remove one full-time equivalent position through workload balancing and efficiency updates. So I'm sure that a software comes in that actually helps us work a little more efficiently. We'll see more. So thank you. Back to you. Thank you. I'll now ask, um, that we'll move forward to our beachfront rental properties presentation and I'll ask Julianne O'Dunny, our beachfront manager, to come for that presentation. Turn your microphone on, please. Thanks. Here we go. Okay. Each front rental properties. We have uh, here shown on uh, the uh, points uh, shown on the slide here. We have rental income commercial properties uh, as 378. That there will be an adjustment made to that in draft two, as we have uh, some tenants presently right now trying to resign as we're going forth. We have some leases that had expired and we're trying to get them going for uh, one additional year as uh, we have this direction from council. Uh, other income includes a $10,000 from the parking lot rental and we have some uh, property tax and utility recoveries that uh, come in the amount of 116000 Operating costs uh, are up at 735000 in capital program buildings. We have reduced that budget. And we have that number in at 50,000. Uh, basically, the status quo uh, budget, uh, we are looking at winding down the operations down there, as we all know, uh, for next season as well. Do we have any questions? Sir Blanchet. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad you uh, brought up the point that uh, there are some uh, leases that are currently being renegotiated, but I believe I read in, in the more detailed report that the, the 378,000 and the utility recoveries were status quo. Uh, and to your point, there may be revisions to that. Uh, but what is the expectation? Like we, we've, uh, we closed Beach Drive, uh, we had high water situations, we have COVID. So I have to expect that uh, some tenants uh, uh, didn't do as well uh, this year as they had done uh, previously. And probably the outlook for next year is somewhat uncertain. So I expect that there could be a, you know, a considerable adjustment to these two amounts. Thanks for the question through you, Madam Chair. Uh, the rental income, uh, the projected amount that we have here shown, uh, was anticipated and was done earlier uh, in the year. We have a, uh, the projected amount in draft two would be reduced. I, will, I don't know if it would say considerably. I haven't done it percentage-wise. But the feedback that we have from the tenants that uh, the leases have currently expired this year, they're the we have positive feedback. So I'm anticipating that as in the detailed report that we had provided earlier. Uh, we're hoping to get uh, most of them uh, again. That's the feedback we had in our preliminary discussions. Uh, till they actually signed the dotted line would be a different story. Uh, but I anticipate that uh, it's positive. They're very positive with it. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to get them uh, herded together now so we can get that prepared now for the budget, get them signed up now and not wait till 
later on in the year or, or possibly January to sign, sign them up. But so that's the, the really the variable is, is a lot of them shut down, closed down for the season, and uh, we're trying just to get them to sign up now so that we can uh, get a more accurate number of where we stand rather than wait till January or February. That, that was going to be my next question is the timeline. Do we think we'll have a much better picture prior to the budget going final then? I, I would hope so. Uh, what the numbers that we can reflect at that time is we'll be able to better f give you better feedback of where we stand with those that are looking at uh, signing up. Okay, and is there a date that we're trying to complete Council all Belanger, the renewals? I think we're speculating. Sorry? I think you're speculating. You're, you're asking the same question? But no, I no, think I'm you're just, trying I'm to push for an answer they that, have that's a, a floating a date answer. In mind that they're trying to. We are chasing it as quickly as we can to, to, to make that. Uh, thank you. Councilor Foster. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, again, I was going to do a s similar thing where you're asked, the question's being asked based on <coughs> COVID and high water, um, which is speculating on both accounts. What we've got is being status quo, it's based on the existence of, of the numbers from 2020, which did include COVID and high water. So, you know, the staff have provided that it's status quo. It's going to be, you know, they're not predicting huge numbers of increase. So the reality is, um, you know, we could be speculating that COVID will be much worse or it could be much better. The reality is when the first round of COVID came in, there was, somewhat of a knee-jerk reaction by a, a lot of levels of government. We're in the second wave right now and it's, it's a completely different approach to it. So I think asking staff to, who brought forward a, a status quo or a conservative uh, numbers to speculate on high water and uh, COVID impacts, um, I think the best we can do is say, this is what we did in 2020 and have it basically the same for 2021. So that's my comment. I agree, thank you. Uh, our treasurer. Thank Sorry, you, Matt. I, I'd like to respond to Councillor Foster's comment. I think our treasurer uh, wanted to respond too, so I'll let you put you next in line. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. I just wanted to mention that while the, the budget status quo in the sense that we haven't changed the activities that we do, are doing, um, the revenue streams were are lower in the 2021 budget than they were in 2020. So in 2020, we had. Uh, rental commercial properties of 499,000. We are now reflecting 378,000 in, in draft one with an intent to still probably adjust that number a little further with better information for draft two. So just for clarity, we do see the declining revenue streams there and I think that's important for everyone to understand. Thank you. Thank you, you still have. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, the, the only difference I wanted to respond to Mr. Foster is most of the tenants were within a three-year lease period uh, last year and uh, the difference this year is quite a few are being renewed. So last year they didn't have an opportunity to react to some of the impacts that, that they were doing because they were under contract. This year they now can uh, negotiate a, a little differently. So that's, that's why I'm saying they're there could be that variable that uh, would be helpful for us to know going in, but uh, I didn't realize that we had already downgraded, so that's positive. Thank you. Are, are, okay, yeah. if we're ready to move forward. Thank you, Mr. Denny. And I will now ask our fire chief, Michael McWilliams, to come forward and present the fire department presentation. Thank you, Jocelyn, uh, Madam Chair, members of council. Uh, I have uh, just the one slide. Uh, I think the director of public works has 37 or so, so I'll just keep going. Um, so the fire department, starting with the operations, uh, it's a simil similar level to other years. We're pretty much status quo. Uh, we do account for cost of living and step increases. Um, we also are awaiting an arbitration uh, decision, so that'll impact wages, but that has been uh, accounted for as well. 
With respect to capital, there's five projects uh, proposed for this uh, coming year. Uh, starting with the first one, um, the number, I apologize, is wrong. That is to uh, read 4,600 um, instead of 1,200. There's been some changes since, uh, since the first uh, discussion with this. Um, we are looking to replace the computer in the training EOC. Um, now we're also going to upgrade that, that room to be able to do uh, virtual meetings and virtual training. So there's cameras and uh, microphones and that sort of thing being added to that, uh, that room. Um, the second item, uh, 5,000, has been included for suppression equipment. This is a small uh, amount that's used to replace damaged hose, nozzles, appliances, and those sorts of things that, uh, that we have to do pretty much on an annual basis. Also, we have 10,000 included for radios, and this has been allocated to purchase some additional portable radios, as well as replace some of the older models that uh, are no longer reliable. Uh, the fourth item, personal protective equipment. This uh, $20,000 is uh, required to replace some of our bunker gear that has now expired. It has an expiry date on it and uh, through health and safety, once it reaches its retirement age, it's no longer uh, usable equipment. So that replaces some of that uh, bunker gear. And the last item um, is uh, funds for the station two renovations. Um, this was approved um, for the 2020 budget to start that process. It is a three-stage three, three stage process, um, the first being this year where we're having uh, drawings uh, done up and, and getting the planning in place. Um, the 2021 um, um, stage, stage two, would be this, this amount here, and that is to start the construction in the living quarters uh, office area. We'll, we'll uh, renovate that area and upgrade the mechanical and electrical systems. And then the third stage would be in the following year where we would add the extra um, garage bay onto the apparatus floor and um, upgrade the, the exterior of the building. So we're just uh, spreading this out over a, a three year uh, term to lessen the impact on any one tax year. So. Um, and then the other two budgets, emergency management and health and safety, those both remain status quo and there's no uh, capital projects uh, planned for those budgets. And those are the highlights for 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I saw Councillor Foster. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a quick question to the Chief, if I might. The bunker gear, which this year you put in as personal protective equipment, uh, when I saw that in the presentation I was thinking, is that something that would fall under the COVID uh, budget, um, COVID assistant budget that the, te that the province has provided to the town? Is there a way to put that in there? <laughs> just, just a thought, it said personal protective equipment, so I had to go with that. Anyway. Through I, you, Madam Chair, uh, nice try. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to do that as well, but that's a, that's a no, thanks. Okay, just wait till you see Public Works where I say the next plow is personal protective yeah, equipment. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, no, I looked at that and too about COVID, but more on a perspective point of view, are you, putting some thought into that for your, 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 your people as far as going to incidents. Um, I know you wear bunker group, but is that in the back of the mind to update and make sure that they're protected from that? And that's question one. And question two is just, um, I'm glad to see that station two is being renovated because I think it's a very important asset to have in the west and in the town to protect our people. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you through you, Madam Chair. Um, as far as protective equipment for, the, like if you're thinking along the lines of COVID and responding to medical calls, um, yeah, we're well protected in that area, always have been. Um, so this bunker gear is, is strictly structural firefighting gear and, and really doesn't uh, fit into that uh, concern. But yeah, otherwise our staff are very well protected when, when responding to medical calls and COVID issues. Thank you. I'm 
wanted to just echo your comment on station number two. Having toured it a number of years ago, I'm pleased to see that it's moving forward slowly but, but surely to be updated. Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, this is a question either to the Chief or to the Treasurer. Just to uh, refresh my memory, uh, is the 400 k all uh, uh, covered through taxation or is it a combination of reserve and taxation or? Um, through you, Madam Chair, to Councillor Belanger, uh, I don't have the exact uh, numbers here. If you can just give me a minute here while I turn to that page and see if I can look that up and answer. I would expect there's um, some reserves being utilized. Um, uh, you can answer at the at the next round if you want. Uh, that's that's fine. Today, so. I, I just need to get to that tab and be able to look at the revenue streams that we are using for that one. Um, and then I can answer that question. Perhaps I can come back to that at a later date, like uh, later in the meeting. Thank you. Seeing no more questions for fire. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll now ask um, our Director of Recreation, Events and Facilities, Chris Roos, to come and present uh, for those departments. Uh, you have oh, the clicker there, if you would. Yep. Morning, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray, uh, members of council. Uh, we have a uh, uh, primarily status quo budget in uh, recreation events and facilities uh, departments. We have uh, um, specific uh, one facility uh, sanitization position that we will be coming forward with in draft two. Uh, beyond that, we do have some longer term COVID-19 considerations uh, throughout a number of the divisions. Obviously, uh, doing a lot of the outward facing programming uh, with the community, we are pivoting somewhat at this time. Uh, and I will highlight a couple of those ideas uh, coming forward in uh, uh, draft two with some specific uh, reports to council to consider in Calby in November. Uh, beyond that, uh, we are looking at uh, new online registration and credit card fees. Uh, you, you did uh, hear already from our treasurer that there are some uh, customer service recommendations and uh, this will be a minor change uh, in our administration section of the department. So uh, a few specifics uh, for each division going into capital very first, uh, uh, as everyone is uh, quite aware, we are working hard on the Twin Pat Arena facility. Uh, 16.9 million is the number that was uh, approved in the project budget uh, officially uh, uh, back in June of this year. And uh, this is a phased number that uh, will continue out into 2022 at least. Uh, and then beyond that, a few maintenance projects. Uh, we have uh, upgrades at the RecPlex. Uh, the youth center has a kitchen renovation and uh, there is a carryover of a, a small portion from this year. Council may remember that back in February we discussed uh, improvements at the beachfront and the, the possibility for doing an enhancement with the large letters and there is a capital uh, number in there that we're waiting for uh, uh, the development uh, um, the, the new developers potentially and that, that we will coordinate that uh, beachfront uh, Wasaga Beach uh, uh, with uh, the, the new plan uh, moving forward into 2021. So uh, beyond that uh, special events, we do have um, a, uh, an important report coming forward uh, in November and we have uh, uh, plan B, should uh, the uh, pandemic restrictions persist or uh, become more strict or less strict, uh, we are prepared to uh, offer alternatives. And uh, there could be cost savings with that as well, but we'll have a specific discussion about it uh, with the draft too. Um, and beyond that, uh, there are a number of contract positions and staffing that uh, um, may have implications based on the alternatives that we uh, adjust uh, into the uh, draft two and uh, closed session discussions will happen there as well. 
Um, we also, uh, as per my uh, oops, as per my slide, uh, have outlined some of the typical new event sponsorships, and this is always a bit of a uh, uh, um, contract uh, five or six uh, external uh, program or uh, special event providers, third party providers in the year coming, and this is our uh, plotted list. We've suspended all of those special events this past summer, but th these uh, third party groups are interested in 2021, provided restrictions don't happen. So I have shown that as that's uh, sort of the status quo special events uh, repertoire as one of the highlights. And moving on to recreation, we definitely have uh, been learning uh, COVID-19 safe uh, uh, programming. Older adult is now starting to uh, meet with participants only outside so far. Uh, we also have youth center slowly transitioning indoors uh, uh, in a couple of weeks when daylight savings comes it seems like uh, it's realistic that we come up with indoor ideas but it's going to be a little bit different than it had been in the past uh, and uh, th these discussions uh, or, or this programming offering will uh, come at a similar cost for next year but it is structurally changing uh, how we operate. Um, Older adult online programming, this continues and we definitely have um, good uptake on Seniors Without Walls. This is one for the oldest of older adults, but there are uh, a, a group in our society, or in our uh, community, I should say, that aren't using computers right now and phones are a great way for uh, uh, older adults. Social isolation is a concern and uh, we have good uptake on uh, Seniors Without Walls and that is uh, you know, small programming lines, but uh, I wanted to highlight that, that we're learning how to get people uh, connected ex and access uh, in the community in ways that are COVID safe. Um, a couple small items that will be highlighted in draft two, uh, public art and gymnastics. Uh, gymnastics is changing as a result of the current pandemic. Uh, we are also uh, increasing a couple sporting events, outdoor stuff, is uh, um, on the rise and we intend to do more safe outdoor sporting. We also um, have great uptake on pickleball and I've been talking around our region and uh, uh, the Blue Mountains, Montera, all the pickleball people aren't going south this year. We're sold out in our current program offering. We've got double the uh, time use at the Recplex right now from uh, this time last year. Uh, but uh, we, we may end up even increasing it more. Uh, so uh, older adults who typically only wanted to play pickleball in the morning now play until almost five in the afternoon. And they're in smaller groups too. So uh, it's just 12 at a time because we're trying to maintain small cohorts and less uh, uh, opportunity for risk. And uh, last but not least, uh, a big discussion currently and it will have implications into uh, at least the first half of uh, uh, 2021. There will be reports coming forward for Council's consideration. Uh, obviously a, a major recreation provider in our community at the YMCA, our close partners as it is our building in the RecPlex. Uh, there are discussions uh, that need to be uh, uh, finalized. We have uh, MOU and there's ongoing negotiations at this time but staff have been working hard on this and uh, um, there will be an important report coming forward uh, on November 12th to discuss if there are costs for our community and council to uh, decide uh, the recommendation of, uh, of staff. And that is it for my uh, budget highlights unless there are questions. Mr. CAO. Thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor. I was just uh, pointing out that Councillor Watson there had put his hand up, so oh. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Watson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a quick question about the YMCA. I saw a, um, uh, an article in Sim Simcoe.com this week that uh, they mentioned about four municipalities were in conversations about the YMCA putting their heads together about support for them. I, I, didn't see Wasaga mentioned, but I, I was just curious if we were part of those discussions with the other Ys in the area to come up with uh, any solutions for the uh, reopening. Thank you. Definitely uh, uh, 
through you, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray, to uh, uh, Councillor Watson. Yes, we have been in discussion with uh, our neighboring uh, municipalities. I think the uh, reference that you are talking of specifically is the North Simcoe grouping. So uh, Tiny Tay, uh, Midland, and Penetanguishene are working on considerations for the Midland Y. Uh, our Y definitely serves a small percentage outside of the town of Wasaga Beach. I think uh, a little bit in Springwater, a little bit in Tiny, and maybe 13% in Clearview. And I have been in discussions uh, with Clearview directly with staff, and the YMCA has talked to us about speaking with council directly there. And last but not least, I've also been in contact with Collingwood, and we're watching what goes on with their facility and the municipality uh, as well. Thank you, Councillor Belanger. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, just a, a couple of questions that might, uh, hopefully, Chris, you can answer them. But uh, you did mention that the Twin Pan Arena is a phased in approach uh, with 16.9 million uh, for 2021. And I know that's coming from uh, both uh, uh, increased debt and, uh, and uh, drawing from reserves. But the, the full construction is 26 million, I believe, for the double pad arena is the number that I've seen. So there'll be another phase in on the 2022. Correct. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, uh, Council Belanger, we have uh, roughly a uh, gross construction cost for the arena. It, it, it becomes a little blurry because we're building two facilities at once. But uh, the tally between the arena and the library come to roughly 40.6 million, and that will be phased in over a 20-month construction period. We expect to start in the summer of 2021, and this is where uh, this uh, capital rolls out. We also have capital costs uh, incurred for consultants, and that is a portion of this 16.9, uh, uh, which is divided roughly 80% uh, uh, for the recreation uh, portions of the facility, 20% for the library. Okay, uh, when, I, when I researched the original estimates, they were about 36 million, so there has been adjustment, because that was my next question, is the original estimates for construction were done prior to COVID, and there has been a significant increase in building materials. Matter of fact, as recently as this morning from a reliable source, they said, you know, uh, any, any wood materials are up 70%. So have we done a re-evaluation of the estimate? That's one question. And uh, my, my last question would be, and you did say it's between con consultant and construction, and we haven't gotten to the library yet, but the construction uh, uh, portion for, uh, construction financing that was mentioned earlier in the presentation was that just under 9 million. So we have 16.9 million here plus 4.7 million mentioned in the library, which takes us over 21 million. But earlier in the presentation, we said the construction financing was at just under 9 million. Is that, I, I'm not quite sure if that's if I'm missing something. Through you, Treasurer. Through you, Madam Ch Chair. Uh, there, the 8.9 million would be the uh, portion that is financed, whereas the 16 million number is the cost of the whole part of activity for that project in 2021. So it's not all being financed through debt, the whole piece. Thank you for the clarification. want to add to that, uh, Mr. Ruth? Certainly, I was only going back to question one from Councillor uh, Blanger, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, Councillor Blanger, so uh, you, you talked about building costs on $36 million. Uh, I, I did clarify previously, 40.6 million. That is the construction cost. That is one portion of our 59.9 budget. Definitely, there were estimates of 36 that uh, we have officially moved to 40.6. Uh, 
I will uh, comment about what I've been learning with our consultants about construction costs, and you're right that residential products like uh, pressure treated is sold out in Canada right now. But uh, steel costs are down, uh, with oil costs down, and we also know that labor costs are significantly down. So we aren't being told exactly what to expect, and only the market can tell us that. So when we go to tender, we're going to find out. Projects are down, and, and uh, general contracting firms may be hungry. I, I can't be 100%, but I've heard both sides of the coin. And I do think that uh, we have some uh, inflation expectations built into this uh, uh, estimate, but we uh, will refine it more and more and more over the next six months before we go to tender. And last but not least, you can rest assured that our architects are contracted to bring those tenders in on target, and they will be working very hard on that uh, because they don't want to go back and redesign. Th thank you for the clarification. Uh, I, I do want to point out, though, that uh, in looking at recent history in Simcoe County, uh, there is uh, very rare that these types of projects come in on budget. So, Just further to that, the most recent uh, affordable housing build was one that did come in under budget, and that was in our region, so I don't think to just make a blanket statement and apply it to the budget is, is fair. Councillor Foster? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And <clears throat> again, one of the other factors is financing is also at a very low rate right now. So you have to take that into consideration. If you looked at the <clears throat> 2018 downtown master plan report, uh, one of, it was in the last meeting they talked about it. The actual construction cost uh, estimated back then was in 2018 was 37 million. So going to 40 million in 2020, 2021 is not an unreasonable uh, increase. But that's not why I was I asked the question. I just, it was more a comment actually related on the uh, special events, recreation, YMCA, and to library, which we're going to be hearing about next. And that is the, um, you know, in, in the COVID, uh, these, I'll call them recreation opportunities, library, YMCA, and special events as they roll out, uh, they provide uh, significant opportunities necessary, especially in a, in a COVID situation for promoting physical and mental health and uh, to fight, as you mentioned, social isolation. So I think, you know, as we, as we see these things, these are all important factors. Um, you know, our culture and history have always been important, but you kind of put them under the table. They're not as important as a brand new building, but the reality is if we're uh, stuck in houses that the, uh, you know, dealing with social isolation for seniors and physical health opportunities for everybody, uh, wherever we can get them is important. So thank you for bringing it forward. And I look forward to uh, moving forward on this. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Um, and now we'll ask Pam Pell, our Chief um, Executive Officer for the Library to come forward and present our library budget. Madam Chair, members of Council. When uh, the Wasaga Beach Public Library Board and staff were developing the 2021 budget, we had three main goals in mind. The first was to find savings. Obviously, we have been impacted by the COVID pandemic, and we're looking at ways that we can trim off the budget for areas that we won't be spending due to COVID. The second was to find ways that we can help the uh, community recover from COVID and deal with the COVID impact. And the third was, of course, to help progress our new library project. So taking all those factors into consideration, what uh, we have come up with is a budget that is very similar to 2020. There's only a minor increase in operating, and the majority of that is due to step and COLA changes. When it comes to the operations for the library in 2021, our main emphasis uh, was trying to develop some community assistance endeavors, and uh, we have allocated approximately $16,000 to do that. 
Among those endeavors are three different factors. The one is uh, providing internet hotspots for our community. These are devices that can be borrowed to enable the people in our community who do not have internet access to gain internet access in their homes, which is ideal whether it's for children in education, whether it's for isolated adults, or any other individuals that perhaps need to work from home. So that's one of our endeavors. It's about $4,300 for the data plans. The second uh, initiative that we're looking at is uh, called Press Reader. It's an annual subscription. It sounds like a lot, but it's for 7,000 digital newspapers and publications in more than 60 languages. Right now we've determined that one of the um, lacks in communities dealing with COVID is access to good information. It's challenging for individuals to know what to believe. There is a lot of misinformation being circulated. Enabling our residents to access these materials will help them have a clear understanding of uh, what is going on globally, especially during this pandemic period, as well as it will access publications will that will help keep them inspired, once again focusing on their mental well-being and their, their happiness through this period. With Press Reader, it's about a $5,000 subscription, but the Simcoe County Library Cooperative is investigating this for <coughs> all of the libraries within Simcoe County. We're getting a quote and we're looking at probably dropping that cost to half, if not maybe a percentage, if all of the libraries cooperate on this. Our third initiative is called LinkedIn Learning. We're investigating a subscription to an online database that provides courses uh, for adults or people of all ages. There's unlimited access to more than 4,000 courses taught by industry experts on subjects including business, software, technology, creative skills. We find that this is a very timely uh, initiative to offer to our community. Those who have lost their jobs, lost their businesses, have to retrain and look for new ways that they can support their families and themselves as individuals. We have spoken with the HR department as well as our um, economic development departments. They find that this is a very timely initiative, that they do see a need for that in our community at this time. The only other increase potentially of merit is we do have a staffing re request that will be brought forward with draft two. The staffing request is a reflection of being prepared for a new library, so I hope that you take that into consideration. Uh, in capital, um, of course, the major ask at this point is for the new library building. We appreciate the, uh, the council has made the new building a priority, and we very much thank you for your continued support moving this project forward. We have two other small additional funding requests for 2021. The one is just for $5,000 to purchase a couple of book spinners. Uh, as you may imagine, if, as we plan to move forward into a larger library, we do need to grow our collection. We're looking at ways that we can house some more items so that we are in a better position to fill our new library with reading materials for the public. And our second request is to increase our digital book budget um, at this time, of course, with people more isolated, being at home, giving them access to more materials online, I think is, is apropos. So we are just asking for a $2,000 increase in order to boost that budget. That budget goes into a pool with our Simcoe County Library Cooperative. We all support this initiative together and the more money that we can put into that budget, the more items that we have available for our community. So that, in a nutshell, is the library's proposed budget. Thank you. Councillor Blanchet. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray. Um, in, in the case of Chris, he did mention, but the, the 4.7, again, is a phased-in number. The, uh, I'm not sure uh, what the increase, the, I was basing it on the 60, $36 million estimate. So it was $10 million at that time, so it's just over $10 million, I believe. Uh, but I, I do have a, a question. I, I haven't seen it through the through here, but I know uh, last year we, uh, for the library and the arena, we started to phase in an amount to account for the operational cost increase to run the larger buildings. I, um, uh, maybe the treasurer, the CEO can, I believe it was 300,000 that we 
did the first year or 250 somewhere in that neighborhood uh, but are we continuing that phase in because I haven't hadn't seen that number uh, for this year or are we are we holding off taking the next step of phasing that in I Madam Chair, through you, to Councillor Belanger, yes, we are continuing that phasing in process. The amount is 300000 um, for the two facilities, 150000 for each on the operating side. So we are continuing to phase that into the tax base. Well, and did I, did I miss that number? What, where was that included in, in the presentation? Uh, the number was not in a slide, but it is in the budget, um, in, in the... So in the in the 3.6, it's already in there. The next phase, the 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 projected increased budget as of the last presentation. Not. So I'm just trying to be certain that I'm understanding the question correctly. So the, in our 21 budget, we have included in both the library and the recreation budgets. 150,000 in each of those operating costs as a contribution to reserve for the future <clears throat> to, excuse me, for the future to be pulled in in 2023 when the operating costs go up, our tax base already has that 150,000 from each of those departments built into it. So I think you answered my question, but that, so draft one included that increase. It did. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kinney. Thank you, Madam Chair. And to Pam, I'm just going to focus on your operation and your COVID uh, community assistant at 16. I think it's fantastic that you guys are doing things like hotspots in the community and, and getting new software to help our community re-educate, learn in that. It just re-emphasizes the importance that our library is in our community because of these outgrowing programs. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Continue. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. If I could, could I just um, direct council members to the library um, operating statement in your budget under tab seven? If you go there, you'll see a transfer to reserves and you'll see the 150,000. So I just wanted to help everyone see where that is in the budget. Okay, and thank you. I'll move now forward with the next presentation. Thank you, Pam. So at this time, I'd like to ask Doug Heron, our Director of Planning and Economic Development, to come forward and do our Planning and Econo Economic Development Department presentations. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of committee. Um, I'm going to speak about the planning operation, uh, planning budget and the economic development budget. Um, in terms of operations for the planning department, uh, it is primarily status quo with uh, inflationary increases for the year 2021. Uh, we do have uh, one planning position that is currently vacant and uh, those wages are being redirected to a planning consultant, WSP, uh, to help with processing of applications uh, so that uh, works within the status quo in terms of increases. We have um, three projects that are carried forward from 2020 to 2021, the official plan update, the West End Secondary Plan Study, and the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw Update. Um, these projects have been um, slowed down this year, primarily because of some staffing deficiencies. And what staffing we did have, because of COVID, we took those efforts and directed them almost entirely towards approval of planning applications to keep the economy going. Um, so we are ramping up on our staffing. Um, as of the next two weeks, we'll have another two planners on board and we'll be able to pick up these projects and carry them forward into next year. Um, not listed on this bullet, but previously mentioned in the, uh, in the treasurer's uh, slides earlier on, is an affordable housing strategy study. 
And this is um, a topic that was uh, identified as a main goal of this council earlier on in the term in 2019. And there is a budget item of $40,000 for that study. Uh, I apologize, it should be listed here. In terms of capital for planning, um, the works for the second floor have been um, completed. We're very happy with the redesign and uh, those costs have been reduced down to uh, capital for what we've seen in previous years and basically for um, minor um, uh, additions to the, um, the workstations. And then with regard to economic development, um, as of a couple of weeks ago, we are now at full staffing complement with two EDOs. Uh, this past year, most of the effort has been directed to uh, COVID, COVID re recovery. Um, but operations going forward into 2021 are per, pretty much status quo with, with inflationary increases. And um, in terms of um, partnerships, it's worth noting, uh, there's a, a few partnerships worth noting. Uh, there's no changes at this time to the fee the costs from 2021 to 2021. The South Georgian Bay Tourism the, Madam uh, Chair. Sorry, Councillor Foster. My apologies. I didn't know we were going right into this slide. Um, because of my uh, relationship with the friends of Nancy Island, I'm going to uh, declare, declare a conflict on that and uh, push away from the table. I'm also going to excuse myself to go get a form so I can fill that out. Thank you. With the South Georgian Bay Tourism, the fee remains the, the um, budget item remains the same from 2020 to 2021. We are aware though that the, their board had a meeting last week to review their operations and potentially their fee structure as well. We've not heard back from them, so I bet I've identified this on the, on the bullet and uh, we're, we're not aware yet that it's going to change, but at this point it won't. Um, the Nancy Island Visitor Centre is worth mentioning. Uh, it had uh, temporary operation this year. It opened late in the season. Uh, this has been a pilot project to maintain a visitor center in Wasaga Beach. And it's also worth mentioning that we budgeted uh, the same amount for next year for the visitor center. Uh, going forward, there is discussion that the visitor center would be located within the new library, which might be a, a better location for that for tourists entering into the town. Um, there is a staff report Again, there should be another bullet here, and I apologize, but there's a staff report on this agenda uh, on the South Georgian Bay Small Business Enterprise Centre, and they're asking the town to increase um, our uh, support of them from $5,000 to $10,000. Uh, the accompanying report on this agenda speaks to that with uh, justifications, so I'll leave it to that. Uh, in terms of projects that uh, are rolling forward next year, um, there are carryover, there's the comprehensive wayfinding study and the economic development study. Both of those studies are supported by grants. Uh, the uh, economic development study is 100% grant uh, covered. Um, both of those studies had kickoff meetings last week and this week, and we expect results from those in March and April of 2021. And then there is a new one, we're calling it the economic development placemaking project. And the idea behind that is there was sort of earlier discussions in terms of uh, should we have a place where tourists and residents can take selfies and create a sel sense of identity in Wasaga Beach. Um, there were some soft discussions about putting a Wasaga sign at Beach Area 2. Um, there are other ideas out there. Um, a, a good example is the Big Red Chair program where there are um, large size 15 foot high red Muskoka chairs placed in different locations around um, the town of Blue Mountains and Meaford, and it's a, a visitation selfie goal. So the $20,000 that's proposed here is a modest amount, it's a placemaker amount in the budget uh, to advance that idea. Um, at this point, we don't have a solid, solid way of how we're going to um, bring that to fruition, but it's worthwhile uh, keeping it on, on the topic for, for the time being. In terms of capital, um, there are minor capital items for economic development. Uh, one item um, in the current 2020 budget is to create a 
to have a backdrop prepared where if there are photos opportunities, it would be a back, backdrop screen uh, representing the branding of Osaga Beach. Um, the, the same thing can be used if and when we ever go back to conferences to promote for doctors or any other issues. Um, so there is a, a current amount in, in the budget this year and we're asking to carry it forward to next year. Partly it's tied to branding and we still have some resolve to come to on the branding for the town of Osaga Beach. Um, and then there's a little bit of money in there for signs. We had uh, monies for signs to bring visitors to the new Nancy Island Visitor Center. There was some confusion on how to get there. That too is being carried forward into, into the next year's budget. So there's a, a, a very quick synopsis for committee. Thank you. Any questions? Councillor Blanchet. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, my question's uh, related to the planning uh, slide. Just the West End Secondary Plan Study carryover. Uh, not quite sure the, the whole geographic uh, area that we're talking, but uh, clearly uh, the casino is uh, delayed and it was a significant catalyst to what might go on there. I'm just wondering if that $166,000 could be carried forward into the 2022 budget because I, but again, I'm, I'm not sure how far the expanse is, but certainly I think there's going to be a significant delay in what was originally expected to happen in that area. Uh, thank you and through you to Madam Chair. The in original uh, intent was to do an OP update for all five of the uh, intensity nodes that we've uh, created in the official plan. The first one was done with the downtown. Uh, but we are seeing out in the west end of town new pressures for development. And the current 2003 official plan just isn't up to snuff, for lack of a, lack of a better word, to address where the development community would like to go. Um, staff brought this forward as a priority last year because there are the uh, commercial industrial lands where there is currently some pressure and some ideas for development. Uh, there is the uh, remainder of the DAS lands which surround the location for the, uh, the casino, which could change to residential or be some kind of modified uh, commercial residential use. There's the um, Lions Court lands, which used to be the McDermott lands. There's Jelly Bean, there's the campgrounds. And then as we make our way down Beechwood Drive, much of those lands are underdeveloped. So think about the lands that abut the new um, uh, uh, public works depot. Uh, there are lands surrounding that that are not yet developed. So the reason we brought this forward is to bring our official plan up to a level where we could provide some healthy direction to the development community and the investment community on, on how all of those lands should be developed. So I, I think the answer is uh, yes, it, it does revolve around the location of the new casino, but it takes in a, a much larger um, aspect of what the west end of town should look like over the next 20 years. Um, there are some comments that this is a gateway to the, to the town of Wasaga Beach that um, can be vastly improved. So that was another reason why we thought it was important to bring forward a, a, an OP update specific to the West End. Thank you for the clarification. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Watson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thanks for that explanation, uh, Mr. Heron. Um, yeah, the West End of, of Wasaga, through my work with the Conservation Authority, there, there is a lot of pressure out in that area uh, for lands to be developed. There's one um, particular file that I've been trying to shepherd through to conservation that's been working on it since 2011. It's still not resolved uh, with it. And uh, so we, we do have pressures from other lands on the West End as a gateway to Wasaga Beach. I think it's very important that this gets addressed in, in this plan. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I just had one thing that, that's kind of a bit of a recurring theme and uh, I kind of lumped in under economic development because I'm wondering if they could maybe take on a lobby role um, was that electronic payment fees are incredibly high for our Treasury Department, for our um, 
parks and facilities for anybody basically who's collecting payments because the whole world now is, is moving towards digital payments. And the ones that are making the most money through all this pandemic, in my humble opinion, are the collector of uh, you know, credit card fees. So I'm not sure if economic development at some point could maybe take a look at you know, lobbying at a greater level. I know it's not um, you know, our problem, but it affects every business in their community. It, it affects our town. It affects the entire world. And as a small business, our fees have more than tripled since COVID started. So when you start to see you know, 10,000 for Treasury and 10,000 for um, parks and facilities just for debit and credit processing, I think that it, there's a bigger picture there and, and somebody just needs to be aware of it. So it might not be the appropriate time, but I wanted to throw it out there for economic development to consider maybe. Thank you. And seeing nothing else, we can probably move along. All right, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Doug. This will now ask Danny Rogers, our Chief Building Inspector, to come forward and present the building budget. Good morning, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray and uh, members of Council, and thank you, Jocelyn, uh, once again for your leadership through the budget process this year. Um, if you're feeling a little bit like uh, this may be Groundhog Day, it's because the numbers that we're bringing forward for building this year are exactly the same that we brought forward last year. Um, we've seen a, a dip in our numbers this year. I think everybody knows why. Um, you know, the suspension of construction. Um, as well as interruptions in the in the supply chain has, has definitely had an effect on on the numbers. So, uh, the revenue that you see, uh, the revenue projections that you see on the slide, um, would reflect us holding the line on our historical numbers on you know small residential and and commercial permits, and see the creation of approximately 350 new dwelling units in Wasaga Beach uh, next year. That's a mix of towns and single-family dwellings. Um, we certainly feel that we're, we're well po poised uh, to be able to do that next year, um, but uh, you know, once again, many, uh, many things depend on, on how COVID uh, sort of evolves in the coming months, and, uh, and so you know, we're putting this number forward thinking that something is achievable, but uh, we won't know obviously until next year. In terms of expenditures, uh, total expenditures in the department are $876,000. And of that, um, we have indirect costs. But the fee structure uh, within building departments is, is dictated by the province. And one of the things that we're allowed to do uh, in setting our fees is offset some of the costs, the indirect costs of, of running the department. So that $93,000 uh, represents you know, transfer to, to other departments within uh, our municipal framework that support uh, the building department in terms of allowing us to do the work that we do. And should, should these projections hold true for next year, uh, we would see ourselves in a position to contribute $95,000 to our reserve that is, is primar primarily constructed to support us through uh, lean years. So that is uh, our very simple budget uh, for 2021. I'm happy to answer any questions should you have. Any. Thank, you. Thank you, Danny. Uh, okay, then our next presenter again is Giuliano for our, as our fleet manager presenting the fleet budget. Presenting the uh, fleet component of uh, the budget is uh, that I have here. I just wanted to. We have the maintenance operations, similar to to, to prior years. It's a uh, maintenance operations, primarily made up of the labor, uh, fleet maintenance, and the fuel component of the uh, vehicle expenses. For capital, we have uh, it broken up into several categories, like duty vehicles, medium duty, heavy duty, and maintenance equipment. 
We have here, as you can see, we have the bylaw that have the uh, ATV Parks Division for the Lake Duty Vehicles Parks Division. Uh, and the Public Works has a, has a unit that's under the water sewer rates. I should say the bylaw unit's also under the parking reserves, as uh, Dina had uh, presented earlier. We have, uh, for the Roads Division, a medium duty vehicle, which is a stake truck. And uh, going into the uh, heavy duty vehicles, uh, we have a couple units uh, for the Roads Division a plow and a garbage packer. We have uh, three units uh, buses for the transit. Uh, I should say that the number that's up there doesn't reflect the additional cost that the county is contributing of $160,000 on top of that's the town portions of $265,000. Uh, maintenance equipment includes the uh, vacuum sweeper, two wheel loaders, and two sidewalk maintenance tractors. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, my apologies, that's right. I'm just getting ahead of myself here. Um, and, and also, a water pump and a 20 ton float is part of the capital purchases. I just wanted to say that there's several trigger points when we look at the capital purchases of the vehicles. We have the asset uh, management plan, that, the, 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 which is reflected in the four and 10 year plan uh, that uh, we have. Uh, we look at that. We have a vehicle equipment evaluation and inspection report that, that is reviewed by the mechanics and myself. And in conversation with the department's uh, heads. So we also look at the, if we can move some vehicles that some of these vehicles have been moved forward from previous years. Uh, there, we are still assessing it. There will be some changes made in draft two that are not reflective on the slide. And I just should make comment that there are a couple vehicles this year that are not reflected here that will be uh, moved forward in that they will not be received uh, by the year end. So that we show, show does that move forward item that are not shown here as some of the uh, larger vehicles take a, a little bit more time to, uh, to uh, make and, uh, and get delivered. That's the presentation I have here. If you have any further questions, I have to take. Councillor Wells. Thank you. Just a clarification for me, Juliano. The light duty vehicles bylaw one unit three. Is that a duplicate of what we saw in the bylaw department? Yes, it is. That that that's what Dina presented. That's that. Okay, so we're not talking two. We're talking one only. The one, yes. Okay. Thank you. Everything goes. They, some of the departments will show that on their uh, part of their budget that does get charged back to, that, to their departments. Uh, uh, it's okay. I just uh, unsure whether we were talking one or two. Just okay. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Seeing no more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. And. Uh, at this point in time, I'm not sure, did you, we are moving into public works. Before, uh, before public works, could we perhaps take a five minute break? Thank so you. We could come back at, uh, actually make it eight minutes, come back at quarter two. Thank you. Thank you.
welcome back to our Committee of the Whole Budget meeting. Uh, for those who missed the first part, Mayor Bifolci couldn't join us today. She is attending a WDI board meeting. And I will pass the chair, or the chair, the conversation back over to our treasurer, Jocelyn Lee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just before we begin with the next presentation, I'd just like to uh, refer back to Councillor Belanger's question on the fire department, um, uh, the fire hall renovations. And we would like to bring this answer back forward for you in draft to, as the fire chief and I were discussing, we need to clarify a few items. So I think this item is best if we just bring back an answer for you in draft two after we've had a chance to confirm a few items. So just to re reply back on that one. And then at this time, I'll ask Kevin Lalonde, our director of public works, to proceed with his presentation. Thank you, Jocelyn, and thank you, Madam Deputy Mayor, members of Council. I'm pleased to present the first draft of the 2021 Operating and Capital Budget for the Department. Uh, divisions within the Department are represented above, and fortunately, there have been no additions this year. Uh, although the Operating Budget remains relatively status quo, I will highlight certainly the uh, notable changes and updates uh, for 2021. Drainage for the department remains a key focus for staff in 21, uh, including continuation of our localized maintenance priorities as well as operational adjustments to help mitigate the impacts and continued impacts from the high water levels, both uh, through increased inspections and maintenance of our storm outlets along the shore, shoreline and, and, and river's edge, but as well as the beach drive spillway maintenance, drainage outlet maintenance and, and blow sand. We do have a couple of studies that are uh, multi-year programs that will continue into 21, including the townwide master drainage plan, which was recently awarded at last coordinated committee meeting, uh, as well as the engineering standards update, which uh, was just initiated recently. Uh, there was some delay there, but there will be certainly a focus on stormwater management, climate change, low impact development standards, and establishing more defined parks development and design standards. With respect to capital works, we have a number of road projects that are, are uh, multi-year projects. So I won't go into too much detail and then certainly there's uh, opportunity for questions uh, following my presentation. We do have the continuation of the Main Street Bridge Rehabilitation Project, which will continue through to June of 2021. We also have the Veterans Way Geometrics uh, Improvement Project, which you'll find uh, asphalt placement along uh, Veterans Way by mid to end November, and then the contractor will remobilize in the spring to do the intersection improvements, as well as some localized drainage improvements at the bend near Judith Court. Um, into proposed projects for 2021, we have a couple of, of uh, exciting initiatives uh, to undertake. Uh, first being the Mosley Street intersection pedestrian signals at both 51st Street South and Mosley, as well as 62nd Street in Mosley. And the need for signalization was confirmed as part of the municipal class EA for that corridor of road that was undertaken in, in 2018. The detailed design is near complete for the full corridor from 5th, 45th Street through to Beechwood. However, staff are recommending the advancement of the intersection, the pedestrian signals at this time uh, to help provide more controlled and, and safer pedestrian crossings through this corridor. These facilities will be um, certainly uh, there will be ability to expand these facilities into full signalized intersections uh, when warranted and, and when the urbanization takes place in the future. We also have, and, and this is further to committee in, in July, um, proposing the advancement of the urbanization of Ramblewood Drive. And this is full urbanization, including curb and gutter, sidewalks, and dedicated bike lanes. And this will span from effectively 45th Street or Trillium Court through to 58th Street South. Uh, we do have a partnered approach with this project as, as Zancor are contributing to their proportionate costs as they have upwards of 40, maybe 50 lots that front along this street. And this street also is an integral component to the full uh, Trillium Creek uh, flow containment program in terms of uh, overland flow route and conveyance. And so there's some adjustments along the profile of that road to help convey the overland flows during those major regional events. 
Under River Road West urbanization, we continue to advance the utility relocation designs in 2020, and, and we expect those to be completed this year. Uh, we are proposing to initiate the actual pole relocations next year, and, and usually we anticipate a two-year program to relocate these hydro poles and the utilities that hang uh, across the pole line. And this simply better positions the, the town for future funding opportunities when, when they present themselves uh, to advance the urbanization of this corridor. Uh, this stretch of road from Veterans Way through to Blueberry Trails is effectively double the size of, of that uh, recently completed in terms of the first phase of River Road West. And so uh, the costs are significant for that full urbanization, but um, we'd like to advance the utility relocations to get us prepared for those funding opportunities and certainly the, the stipulated time frames and, and construction deadlines they provide on, on some of the funding programs. Continuing with roads, we have, uh, as, as council and committee is aware, we are nearing the completion of our municipal class EA for Beach Area 1 and 2, as well as the Main Street streetscaping program. And as part of that, uh, and, and following the closure of that EA, we would, are proposing to advance the detailed design for Beach Drive uh, based on the preferred alternative that is under consideration right now. Uh, that includes, uh, as, as committee may recall, uh, sidewalks, um, kind of an events corridor or pedestrian thoroughfare, which can be used for different events, um, car shows, that type of thing. We have a couple of uh, landscaped uh, corridors as well as the uh, cycle track or a bikeway, as well as boardwalk and certainly the shoreline protection measures that are necessary uh, along that corridor as well. Moving into water and wastewater capital projects, uh, a couple of multi-year programs that will continue through to 2021, including the tertiary filter upgrades and that is the, the disc filter technology upgrades. We have the West End Water Storage Reservoir and Depot, which includes the construction of Joan Avenue, south through to, from Beechwood through to Ailing Reed Court, as well as site clearing, site preparation, and stormwater management in anticipation for the new elevated storage tower, which uh, will follow in the coming three years. Uh, part of that program also includes the Beechwood Drive trunk water main looping, which is necessary uh, in advance of the commissioning of the water tower. Um, with the delays in the external works as part of the Sunnydale Trail secondary improvements, it is anticipated that the water main replacement, which was proposed to advance this year under that contract, will be deferred until 2021. And what we have next is um, the River Road West water tower, and this is the interior uh, painting and repairs. And most of the interior coating dates back to 1983, and, and it's been over 10 years since we've last uh, performed interior work on this tower. Uh, following an inspection in 2014, uh, coating deficiencies were noted during that time, and so it is proposed to completely remove the interior coating and replace it per AWWA standards. This is a preventive maintenance measure which will certainly extend the life of this uh, important structure. Also, and, and more recently, we presented an information report to committee in September specific to the Janetta uh, well, water treatment plant and the chlorine contact chamber relocation. Uh, under current conditions, the chlorine contact chamber effectively bisects that parcel of land, which is under consideration for the beachfront redevelopment. And it is being proposed to not only uh, relocate that facility, but also uh, ex expand it to accommodate uh, the full build out uh, of the community. And really that's just an effect of, it's, it's a large pipe that is uh, placed underneath the ground and it's, it's, uh, it's sized uh, such that uh, specific chlorine um, additions uh, are reflective in that. It's, it's the, uh, the disinfection process that we use primarily for our water system. And finally, we also have the water pollution control plant biosolids complex upgrades, and, and this is particularly the detailed design. This is a, a three-year program that's being proposed, and, and year one being the design. And many committee members may recall in, in March of, of 2018, 
the Ontario Clean Water Agency completed an assessment of, of causes of odors at the plant and the means of preventing these odors from being produced. Um, this past year, a more comprehensive solids treatment and storage study was completed again by Aqua and key findings from the evaluation are, are driving this project and particularly includes the conversion of one of the solids holding tank to an aerobic digester to meet um, solids retention time requirements as regulated by the province. We also have the introduction and proposing the introduction of solids thickening technology which will improve system performance, reduce odors uh, to current, uh, compared to current operations and provide enough treatment capacity to delay the need for additional solid storage past 2045. And we also have a, a couple of initiatives proposed uh, in terms of replacing existing blowers with more energy efficient turbo blowers. Under drainage, again, a couple of multi-year projects that uh, will continue into 2021. Um, as, as the committee is aware, we've advanced the Trillium Creek Flow Containment Berm Project, and that will be completed uh, by May of 2021. Following receipt of permits and approvals for the Bay Sands Area Drainage Outlet Construction Works, that will be tendered this fall, ideally late this fall or early next spring. And that includes the uh, new storm sewer outlet opposite 62nd Street North, as well as localized drainage improvements uh, between 61st and 63rd Street. Again, into 2021, we have uh, subject to property negotiations and acquisition of an easement. We hope to advance uh, some drainage improvements at the intersection of Constance and Thomas Boulevard to accommodate overland flows. Under day labor, we have proposed uh, drainage improvements along Shore Lane between 39th and 41st Street. This remains a, a priority for staff with, with limited opportunities to uh, help uh, alleviate any interim uh, challenges. Typically, we'd rely on uh, low impact or infiltration techniques to address localized drainage challenges um, in areas where drainage facilities don't exist. Along this corridor is a challenge for staff uh, simply because of the high water table as well as a very narrow road allowance to accommodate such facilities. And as such, this requires uh, effectively full urbanization with curb and gutter, a new storm sewer, and uh, resurfacing. Into transit, we have our continuation of our, our transit shelter uh, additions along the uh, routes one and two, and, and these are staged and, and positioned in accordance with ridership statistics. And finally, into parks, we have the Orchard Drive pedestrian bridge replacement. Um, as committee may recall from our 20, I guess it was 2018, Oh, some inspections of our pedestrian bridges. This uh, structure was closed at that time due to structural concerns. Uh, we've since advanced the design. This was uh, tabled uh, early on last year for budget. However, due to competing priorities, uh, we, we had uh, deferred it to this year. Uh, we've reintroduced that program again this year and, and hope to advance that. Uh, and it will provide a, a critical link to our, our uh, trails network, both in the Southwest as well as uh, for the future um, Sunnydale Trail Secondary Plan. And finally, we have the Glendale Park Redevelopment and Playground Replacement Project. Um, COVID played, uh, COVID came into play with, with the delay of this project this year. Uh, staff had anticipated engaging uh, not only a landscape architect, but also have a, a form of a, a neighborhood or community consultation program around the redevelopment of this park block. We wanted to stage uh, an outdoor space to and, and get feedback and input from area residents and then design that space around that input and, and feedback and then advance construction concurrently with that. Um, obviously with, with uh, social distancing and some of the, the limitations with interactions, this was deferred and we're gonna look at more creative ways to uh, have that consultation and engagement next year as well as advance the uh, playground uh, replacement uh, needs at that time. And with that, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor, I believe that generally summarizes the highlights and notable changes to the public works budget. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Councillor Wells. Thank you, Kevin. Going back to the water wastewater projects, um, just the reference to the Beechwood Drive trunk water main looping. Um, I understand the need for it and the, and the intent. 
At this point, I just confirm my belief, Beechwood Drive has not been turned to the town by Ontario, am I correct? Correct. So is there an implication, are there implications uh, for this water main looping in the sense that we are traveling a provincial corridor rather than a municipal corridor? Uh, there's no challenges. We just require a different set of permits from the MTO to advance that infrastructure, um, which is, uh, it's not very onerous. We, we have done so with the, the rest of the infrastructure we have further west along Beechwood as well as down Lines Court. So it's, it's really another, more red tape, I guess, so to speak, but another permit process that we'll have to follow. Somewhat off topic, are we any further advanced in the sense of Beechwood being turned over to Collingwood and Wasega Beach as opposed to staying with the province? Not at this time. There, there haven't been extensive conversations in that regard since at least 2012. Councilor Blanche. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, yeah, I have a, a few questions and comments. Uh, on River Road West, uh, I believe the number that we had been talking about for the entire project for number of years was 12.3 million is that correct correct it's uh, roughly 12 million councillor or above I don't oh. have that number well that's Probably, okay you're right it is around uh, 12 and million. and like at what at what point and and what is the differentiation like we had Ramblewood urbanization River Road West I know uh, you know do we apply for grants on all of these or is it just major thoroughfare or like because uh, we're, I'm, I'm kind of curious of how the grant process is going to go given uh, the situation of how much governments have spent to date on, on other things. So uh, we, the first step was the relocation of utility. I'm assuming we don't apply for a grant at that point, but uh, when we actually start uh, construction on the road, we would apply for a grant or prior or Correct. So, so we have applied for funding for this corridor in the past, and and this is also a development charge recoverable project. Uh, the majority of it is DC recoverable, uh, so we will leverage those uh, reserves to to offset the cost for the relocations. And you know, like you said, it's it's a twelve million dollar project. So in a perfect world, we just continue and you know following utility relocations, we'd advance that program. However. Obviously, financially, that, that could be a challenge, and, and historically, we've waited for those types of projects and, uh, for funding, as as we did with this last phase of River Road West. I know we applied ICIP, and there was other infrastructure funding. So, um, even through the development charges study, uh, we have identified funding as as a, a, an alternate source to help advance that program. Okay. Um the other one uh, was, uh, and I had talked to you about this earlier, when, uh, when we talk ab about uh, operations, uh, cost increases related to the Double Pad Arena and Library, uh, I'd uh, checked with our Director of Parks and Recreation and Facilities and there had been no allocation up until this point for public works. I'm, I know we, uh, I'm a member of uh, the Wasega Beach United Church on Zoo Park and just, for that parking lot, the number of gardens and trees and everything that was required. It's a major volunteer initiative to, to keep that maintained. So we're talking over there, uh, major snowplow operations. It's gonna be a very large parking lot where I'm assuming that our parking lot's going to require the same amount of green space and islands and different things. So, uh, and maybe that's not gonna come forward till next year. Uh, but council does have to consider uh, the efficiency study that was done was about a hundred thousand dollars more operational cost than what had been estimated to date. And then I, I'm assuming we could hit fifty thousand, but uh, from a public works perspective, but that may be a little high. Uh, but again, you may, that may not come forward till next year, so we can. Uh, but just for consideration, and then just my. My last point, and I bring it up uh, because I'm, I'm going somewhere with this later, but uh, the relocation of the chlorine tank, I want to be on record, is at one point that was indicated as a cost directly associated with the location of a casino on Beach One, and 
it, it's really a cost associated with the redevelopment of each one. So that's I just that's my comment. Thank you. I can certainly speak to the arena library uh, staffing implications. Um, as developments continue and growth continues to happen uh, within this community, and, and certainly we're, we're well aware of, of the impact that both Sunnydale Trails is gonna have uh, on our department, as well as some of the, um, kind of the perimeter developments that are underway right now with Elm and Zancor North and, and potentially the business park lands. Uh, we do have a structured um, consideration for additional staffing in the next three years um, within pretty much all divisions within my department to reflect that need. And where I see um, staffing levels uh, for the Arena Library, I believe we can draw that from those additional staffing that we have through, through those other development needs. So, um, we, Chris and I haven't had that discussion at length, but that's where I see those uh, those challenges uh, being addressed is, is through the reality of additional staffing through growth and development of the community in those major major hubs. Mr. CEO. Thank you. Just to uh, further elaborate on what the director says uh, or said, um, today we're focused primarily on the 2021 20, uh, budget, but as part of the budget exercise, we do uh, operating budget forecasts. And we, and we do capital budget forecasts. So we look at the four-year operating budget forecast and the four and 10-year capital budget forecast. So we have had discussions internally at the staff level about the operating uh, budget forecast and um, looking at these uh, major developments that are gonna come on board, like the Sunnydale Trails, which is uh, uh, when it's fully built out, it'll be a community of about 8,000 people, uh, 3,500 homes, uh, extensive extensive community parkland roads, whatnot, Elm Developments, which is continuing to to grow at a, at a fast pace. So uh, within our departments, we're looking at that as part of our operating budget about what the impacts of bringing on these new developments will be. And so rather than look at things in isolation, we're taking a comprehensive view and taking a long-term view. So those will be brought forward for information of council as we move through the budget process through the through the later through the later drafts and I think that uh, certainly we're focused on trying to prepare the municipality to uh, to deal with these challenges that uh, that growth uh, present so I just wanted to give councils some assurance that we are dealing with that and we're dealing with it on a, on a comprehensive basis and that information will be coming forward for council thank you I have one, one question for Kevin with regards to parks. Um, there's nothing yet showing up in the West End, and I just wondered if maybe that's in the, the four-year or the further out in the, the forecast. Right. Um, certainly, uh, as, as committee is aware, we, we just completed the Parks and Trails Master Plan, and, and that, uh, I, I believe, remains available for public input and comment online through Let's Talk Wasagabeach.com, plug. Um, and so through that program, it was, it, was, it was quite evident that there are gaps within our parks network, both through the east end as well as the west end. And at this point, we have some opportunities, uh, mind you, west of uh, 45th Street through Zancor, where parkland is going to be dedicated. We have a couple of development uh, opportunities in the, in the far west end where there may be parkland opportunities. But looking at lands, and, and certainly it's recognized that we need, we need more parks and, and specific facilities in, in those areas. Um, but in terms of, of the plan for 2021, it's what we're focusing on is, is really, um, at this point, a better strategy to, to acquire lands if need be, or looking at the development, um, the residential development growth in that area where we will acquire that through that process rather than, than uh, purchasing lands ourselves. Councillor Foster. I'd, sorry, I'd like to make a general comment, not related specifically to Kevin. Is it all right now, or would you prefer? Um, are we finished with Public Works? I think we are. So, uh, Jocelyn, did you want to say anything else before you receive general comments, or do you want to uh, just move in? No, thank you. That's exactly where we would be at this point in time. Then the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, it, it covers off 
Kevin's area, but all the areas. And, and what we've seen today and in the previous one is really a, a conservative approach, uh, conservative and balanced and, and somewhat innovative uh, solutions here. And I, I can't, you know, perhaps Kevin is the poster boy for the, uh, because he has the largest slice of the pie as has been pointed out. But, uh, you know, really all of our departments are keeping uh, the taxpayers in mind, both current ones and future ones. So as to Councillor Belanger said, you know, ongoing operations, well, part of bringing on Zancor and, and all the other subdivisions is it's going to generate more tax revenue to help offset the cost, so cost paying for cost. So I just, you know, certainly want to thank Kevin and, and all the department heads and, and uh, for, for the presentations. There's a huge amount of work that they've made relatively user friendly. And uh, again, there's a lot more to come. So to, to everybody, uh, you know, I might be stealing your thunder, but I think it's, it's been a great presentation and I thank you for the, uh, the effort that was done. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lange? Yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, I just want to echo uh, Councillor Foster's comments, and uh, I think I pointed out once before, but uh, we we just hired a uh, deputy treasurer, so most of the work was done with uh, w with a little shorthanded. So uh, this is uh, very uh, labor intensive and very detailed. So thank you for all the work everyone's contributed to it. Thank you. And if I could just Madam Treasurer. <laughs> thank you. If I could just add, this is very much a cooperative uh, collaboration of the group. We all get together, we work on things together and work through it. So uh, to the team, thank you very much uh, to bring this all together for everyone. And just to echo that certainly to the team, it's always one of my favorite days when all the department heads are here and actually presenting because it puts you know, pictures and, and certainly discussion to all the things that we see monthly and all the reports that we read and approve so thank you to everyone for much hard work so I will read the motion if there are no more comments or questions um, so due to the conflict identified by Councillor Foster we have had to modify the motion slightly from the one that appears in the agenda package today so I will read it uh, to you the committee of the whole as budget committee recommend to council that it receive the treasurer's supplementary report on the first draft of the 2021 operating and capital budget for information and discussion and further, the committee provide direction to staff with regards to changes required to draft number one for the budget roll-up, apart from budget items related to Nancy Island. And further, the committee provide direction to staff with regards to the matters still pending and whether or not to include them in the next budget roll-up. I could get a mover and a seconder for this motion. Councillor Foster, Councillor Watson. All in favor? And that passes. Uh, in favor. And the new motion, again required due to the previously identified pecuniary interest, is that Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee recommend to Council that it provide direction to staff with regards to budget items pertaining to Nancy Island with no changes at this time. Good next steps. Do you know that? I note that so. Councillor Foster has pulled away from the table. If I could have a mover. Councillor Keeney. And a seconder. Thank you. Councillor Wells. All in favor? And that passes five zero. Thank you. Mr. CAO. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor and, and members of Council. That, so that uh, uh, concludes the, the first draft of the budget. So now, as, as Councillor Foster has alluded to, um, work continues and we'll be uh, taking the input and comments that we received today on the first draft, uh, some of the outlying uh, or outstanding issues that were identified as part of the presentations and working on preparing the second draft. And we'll be back toward Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee in November with the, uh, with the second draft. So thank you, members of council. Wonderful, I'm sure we're all looking forward to it. Okay, moving along in the agenda, we have nothing listed under unfinished business. Under new business 5.1, we have the Economic Development Officer's Report dated October 15 through the Town of Wasaga Beach Municipal Contribution to the South Georgian Bay Small Business Enterprise Center. Is there a re presentation on this or we're just, uh, just read the motion and keep going? Okay, so there's a slightly modified motion, so if you could listen. 
carefully. The Committee of the Whole recommend that Council hereby receive the report titled Town of Wasaga Beach Municipal Contribution to the South Georgian Bay Small Business Enterprise Centre dated October 13, 2020 as information and further that the request for an annual municipal funding increase of $5,000 resulting in a total contribution of $10,000 to the South Georgian Bay Business Enterprise Centre starting in the 2021 Economic Development Operating Budget be referred to Budget Committee for consideration. I would need a mover and a seconder for this motion. Councillor Foster, Councillor Kenny, all in favor? And that passes unanimously. Uh, the next motion from the Director of Finance and Treasurer's report dated October 15th, quarter three, 2020 financial report. Would you like me to read the motion before I give you a chance to speak, or would you like to speak first? Whichever. Yeah, I can, I'll put the motion on the floor. Uh, so that the Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee recommend to Council that it receive the QT 2020 Financial Report for information. This includes the Staff Report 2020, Operating Summary, Capital Summary, Balance Sheet, Reserve Summary, Appendix A, which is the Debt and Reserve Schedule for the Beachfront, Operational Summary for Q3, and the Capital Summary for Q3. Madam Treasurer, would you like to speak to this? Um, I can I can provide some information if you would like at this time, or if everyone's comfortable, we can I can just address questions if there's any questions. Okay. We'll put it out for a mover and a seconder. As well as Councillor Blasier. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, all in favor? There is in favor. The next uh, item, 5.3, is the Director of Finance and Treasurer's Report, dated October 22nd, 2020, Recovid 19 Financial Impact, update number four. And I would need a mover and a seconder for this motion. Councillor Foster. Councillor Watson. And it reads that Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee recommend to Council that it receive for information. Treasurer's COVID-19 financial report for the period ending September 2020, and that further, the Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee recommend to Council that the Treasurer be authorized to respond to the province's Safe Start Agreement request for Phase 2 COVID-19 funding, which is due by October 30th, 2020, pending final confirmation of COVID-related revenue losses and cost containment measures with directors, indicated, indicating that additional funding is not required. And further, the Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee recommend to Council that the Treasurer be authorized to allocate a portion of the Phase 1 Provincial Safe Start Agreement COVID-19 grant funding amount of $806,000 adjusted to actual results, the allocations as presented in the staff report below, with any remaining excess left in the reserve account for requirements identified in 2021. And further, the Committee of the Whole as Budget Committee recommend to Council that the Treasurer be authorized to respond to the Province's Safe Start Agreement request for Phase 1 transit funding reporting for the period April 1, 2020 to September 30, 2020. Is there any? Just from one to the other. Any? Thank you. Councillor Watson? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm very pleased to see the, the report. Uh, and my sincere congratulations to staff, the CAO, the command team, every, everyone involved with this. It, it appears uh, through COVID, we, we haven't had a, a major impact to us. There has been some impact, but with the transitional funding, uh, we're able to cover that, and I just think it's a job well done by everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Blanchet. Yeah, thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. I'm, I, I echo your comments, uh, Councillor Watson. But uh, to our CAO, uh, like it's uh, obviously you're involved with uh, another municipality, but do we look at uh, maybe uh, what other municipalities are doing related to maybe a cost associated with COVID that, that we may have not miss, or missed or not anticipated? Uh, you know, because it has, it, it sort of has secondary effects that could uh, affect a community or a municipality. And it looks like we may be in a surplus situation, which is uh, great work. But uh, 
I, I'm just wondering if there is any communication between municipalities to look at maybe opportunities they've seen for funding from the 800, well, their amount would be different, but. Thank you, um, thank you, Councillor, for the question, and through you, uh, Madam Deputy Mayor. On the, on the details, the treasurers may be having conversations uh, amongst themselves across the county, but I can, I can tell you that at the CAO level, we certainly have been talking about this subject, and, and uh, most of the municipalities, um, uh, most of the CAOs, um, have indicated that they're in a similar position to uh, Wasaga Beach in that. The, um, the grant that was provided by the province has been able to cover their costs uh, with respect to uh, COVID um, by and large, and that most are gonna carry a surplus into 2021 of the grant that they've received. So most are in that situation. There's a couple of municipalities. Uh, some have incurred a significant revenue loss. Uh, one that comes to mind in Innisfil due to the Georgian Downs Casino being closed, there was a significant amount of revenue that came in and, and that probably would have been very difficult for that municipality to overcome. So I think they're, um, they're um, most likely gonna be in a position where they're gonna be asking for, for further assistance. And uh, there's another municipality as well, but most of them are carrying, um, carrying a little bit of a surplus or a surplus into 2021. I did have a conversation with the treasurer just to chat about um, interest, uh, foregone interest revenue to ensure that we did capture that because that for some municipalities was a significant cost because they did incur you know, the, the interest revenue on, on delayed payments and the treasurer uh, has indicated that certainly that's captured in our amount. Um, I'm not sure if the treasurer has anything to add to, to my response, but uh, that from the CAO level is where um, municipalities that, uh, that I've been in conversation with have indicated where they're at. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, through you, Madam Chair. Um, we have uh, looked at the various expenditures and from what I have observed of others, we are in line with what other um, municipalities are incurring as well. And as further in the letter from the minister when the grant was issued, they were expecting that most municipalities would be able to cover their 2020 costs and be able to carry funds forward to 2021. And that was outlined in the actual grant as well, that that was the expectation. They recognized there would be some municipalities with extreme situations, and those are the ones that they're trying to set up the phase two funding for. Uh, however, the, the, perspe the expectation was municipalities would be doing cost containment and um, that would help offset lost revenues and then they would be able to put some of their funding through um, the grant and still have some left over. I do think that we'll probably find by the time we're done for 2020 that maybe the costs are slightly higher than the 188 in today's staff report, but I don't think that they're going to be substantially because we've gone through the material items for three quarters of the, of the year and I think we have a pretty good understanding of what we're facing, but I could st still, still see some um, possible increases between now and the end of the year results. But I expect we're carrying at least 500,000 to 600,000 of grant revenue into 21. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Foster. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, and again, I echo the comments. Uh, having a conservative approach uh, to it and being um, leading in the in how we dealt with COVID uh, as a town, we we perhaps were different than some of our peers, but uh, you know we're able to mitigate it. Um, I you know if it, this is and I believe our our treasurer and our staff and uh, you know always and the province too kept in mind there's really only one taxpayer at the end of this so. You know, if, if we were liberal with our uh, spending and, and using it all up, eventually we have to pay for it. And there's so many grants and, and programs that have been put out at both the provincial and the federal level and our municipality doing things to, to mitigate the impact. Um, eventually, it's got to be paid back. So I, I do appreciate the fact that our numbers are, are bang on and conservative and, and exactly as they should be. And I wouldn't expect any less, but I'm certainly comforted to know that's exactly what we got. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Pelagie. 
Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Bray. Uh, just, uh, I, had, uh, I, I don't know if uh, we incurred a cost, but when, when we had the extra policing for some of the events that occurred where they called in uh, reinforcements, how, how is that covered and uh, is that an additional charge to the municipality? And would, there, uh, would those costs have been captured if there is? Uh, through uh, Madam uh, Deputy Mayor to the councillor. So those costs, uh, councillor identified as being provincial costs. Uh, so they're outside what the municipality would pay. The, the town pays uh, base level uh, a fee, or sorry, pays a base level fee based on the number of uh, properties within the municipality. And then on top of that, calls for service fee. And that makes up the total uh, about 98% of the total uh, cost to the municipality. There are costs that are incurred that are identified as provincial costs where the province takes action on particular matters. Um, the um, incidents that the um, councillor has referred to were identified as provincial costs and they are, those costs are paid for through the province. They're not added on to the municipal costs. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. No more comments. I read the motion. Um, it was moved by Councillor Foster, seconded by Councillor Watson. All in favor? That carries 6 0 with no one in opposition. And that concludes this meeting. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.